Hi students, it's Mr. Sagers back with another video for Earth and Space Science. In today's video, we'll be talking about Earth's geologic processes. By the end of this video, you should be able to compare and contrast the varied constructive and destructive geologic processes, as well as be able to model these processes both spatially and temporally. Let's get to it. In this lesson, we'll focus primarily on the Earth's geosphere and the different processes that shape and reshape the geosphere over time. Remember that the geosphere consists of the rocks and minerals that make up our planet. Geologists classify rocks according to their type and how they form. Sedimentary rocks form when particles of rock, sand, minerals, and dead biomass settle out of the water or air and are compressed into rock layers. Igneous rocks form as molten magma or lava cools and then solidifies, and metamorphic rocks result when existing rocks are changed or metamorphosed due to heat and pressure deep inside the planet. While each of these three rock types may have hundreds of variations and come in very distinctive formations, each one is subject to the many constructive and destructive forces that alter the planet's geosphere. Constructive forces are those which result in the formation or continued building of landmasses or other features on the surface of our planet. Both orogeny, or mountain building, and volcanism are examples of constructive geologic processes. Destructive forces represent those that break down or disrupt the Earth's landmasses or other surface features. Weathering and erosion, mass wasting, and earthquakes are examples of destructive geologic processes. Orogeny is the geologic term that describes the process of mountain building. Orogeny is most common when two landmasses collide at a convergent plate boundary. As the plates collide, the continental crust within the plates tends to buckle and deform. Usually, the crust from one plate is thrust above that of the other and mountain ranges begin to grow. Over millions of years, these ranges elevate in height as the plates continue their collision. Mountain ranges such as the Alps in Central Europe and the Himalayas in Southeast Asia formed through the process of orogeny. Volcanism occurs when superheated material from the Earth's interior makes its way into the Earth's crust. Volcanic features known as plutons can form underground as magma penetrates the Earth's crust and then cools beneath the Earth's surface. More recognizable, however, are the volcanoes that break through the Earth's crust and spew out lava, gas, and ash. Through repeated eruptions, volcanoes form mountains over time. If volcanoes begin their life on the ocean floor, they may eventually grow tall enough to break through the ocean surface and form islands. While both orogeny and volcanism are considered constructive geologic forces, sadly, nothing in Earth's history lasts forever. Weathering is the process of breaking down rocks and minerals through agents such as wind, rain, flowing water, and glaciers. Wind causes weathering as moving air picks up tiny particles and blasts them against larger rocks. The abrasion caused by wind shapes Earth's rocks into smooth and fluid-like formations. Rain, particularly acid rain, weathers Earth's geosphere as the dissolving properties of water slowly wear down and react with minerals found in Earth's landmasses and mountain ranges. Flowing water in rivers and along coastlines carves out geologic formations such as canyons and beaches. And frozen glaciers, weighing millions of tons, can slowly carve their way through mountain ranges over thousands of years, resulting in large, U-shaped valleys. Erosion is the process wherein weathered material is transported away from its source. For example, a flowing river erodes sand and pebbles as it carries them downstream. And wind erodes minerals as it blows tiny particles about the Earth's surface, sometimes depositing them in formations such as sand dunes. Mass wasting is a particular form of erosion, wherein large masses of the Earth's surface are pulled down slope under the influence of gravity. Mass wasting can take the form of a landslide, rock slide, avalanche, or mud flow. Mass wasting often occurs in conjunction with heavy weathering from rain, flowing water, or as a result of an earthquake. Earthquakes occur along fractures or faults in the Earth's crust and send violent shockwaves through the geosphere. Earthquakes have long been known to pose a destructive threat to man-made structures such as buildings and roads, but earthquakes also represent a destructive force to the planet's surface. Earthquakes can create new faults as they alter the Earth's crust. Mass wasting can be triggered by an earthquake event. And the shifting of plates that results from earthquakes also causes some parts of the crust to elevate while others may sink. 
One important and final note regarding Earth's geologic processes is that the planet's history is still being written. Continents will continue to move, volcanoes will continue to erupt, and destructive forces will relentlessly continue to shape the Earth's surface for billions of years to come. Some of these processes occur over a large area, while others affect a relatively small geographic location. Likewise, the amount of time required for each varies depending upon the process. We can model these processes on a spatial and temporal graph. Orogeny, for example, usually affects large areas of the geosphere and may take millions of years for mountain ranges to form. Single volcanic eruptions, on the other hand, may affect only a small area of the Earth's surface and last only a few hours. Depending on their temporal and spatial characteristics, other processes can be modeled on our graph as well. It is important, therefore, to account for both spatial and temporal scales when considering the effects of the many geologic processes that shape the surface of our planet. So to recap, the rocks and minerals of Earth's geosphere are in constant flux due to competing constructive and destructive geologic forces. Constructive geologic forces build up and create new landmasses, while destructive forces disrupt or destroy existing features on the surface of our planet. And depending upon the process, these forces may vary both as to time as well as the geographic area that they affect. Well that wraps up our video on Earth's geologic processes. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, Ad Astra. Thank you.